Yes, the book is absolutely terrific. So, first things first, we have to deal with Achilles. He is the main character, and he does get a couple of lines in the book. Um, but to go with Achilles, there is also Patroclus, and there is Briseis. You can't get away from it. Those three um, are who this story is mainly about, plus with Agamemnon, and as a side character, Odysseus and Ajax. So, Achilles, his name means distress, grief, pain and sorrow, which pretty much those four adjectives sum up the Trojan War. Because it was distressing, it was griefful, it was a lot of pain and it was a lot of sorrow for everybody involved, be they Greek, be they um, a Greek, be they a Trojan. Um, and actually, distress, grief, pain and sorrow sums up the women as well. Um, his mother was a sea goddess, goddess Thetis, who spent most of the book weeping. And because her son was immor was um, wasn't um, immortal, though she wanted him to be mortal, his father was a mortal king. Um, what good qualities that I've managed to find? He was strong, loyal, highly skilled, looks like Apollo, and confident. Um, he was a mighty warrior, and he was fearless. Those are the only sort of good things. He is the epitome of a sulky, rebellious, and whiny and proud teenager. He didn't respect authority unless he agreed with it. He joined the Greek army um, to go to Troy age 17. So it explains his impulsive, vain and impatient behaviour. His mother left him at age seven because she couldn't cope with the fact that her son was mortal. So Achilles is pretty much of a basket case, really. Uh, a rebel and he's very proud. So, yeah. Yes, and he still gets his own mind map even though it's Briseis's book. But it's not Briseis's book because, wonderfully, Pat Barker has used um, Briseis to describe everyone. Everybody gets a write-up here, both bad and good, and she explains them in the most human way possible. She really hu re humanitizes everybody. Um, stunning, deeply humane, compulsively readable. And that's very, very true. That's actually... It, it is. I particularly like... There's one chapter where Briseis talks about how all the young men died and what killed them. And then Briseis also talks about the women who are the mothers of these sons that died. Um, they talk about how they were as small children. And she also, uh, Briseis also mentions like when she goes back to Greece after it all she says oh i keep bumping into all these trojan women with their half trojan half greek children um by their greek masters and she's saying that's so and so from so and so that's so and so from them that's that and she knows that they remember their trojan children because obviously um when a greek army when a, when you sack a city you kill all of the boys you kill all of the babies um if they're boys you kill all of the pregnant women just in case they're carrying a boy and you capture all the women and you take them back um as slaves because that's what you do in the 18th in the 18th in the 8th century bc there you go so yeah it is really really good really, really humane patroclus actually comes off as the best character in this book if you're looking for like somebody with morals Patroclus would be your go-to guy. Odysseus um, is an interesting, slippery, wily, cunning character. Agamemnon is basically the template for um, Game of Thrones' is Mad King. Um, burn them all, burn them all. Yes, um, this is where he got him from. Um, but it is brilliant, absolutely brilliant book. And it's really, really, really good. She describes everything from rats to maggots to worms to the medical tent to what it was like underneath the huts, in the huts, what it was like to be in the Greek camp. You really feel like you're there. Her use of adjectives and descriptive language is brilliant. It really, really is a good book. Um, she brings it all to life. Obviously, you don't get the battles, but you don't need the battles. The battles aren't why we're here. Though when she does describe their deaths, it's usually with like clinging on to their ripped out intestines. So y you do get a lot of gore. But I mean, hello, this is the 8th century BC. So what else do you expect? When the Greek queen Helen is kidnapped by Trojans, yes, Helen is in this and you do um, 
uh, read about her. Uh, the Greeks sail in pursuit, besieged the city of Troy, trapped in the Greek soldiers' camp as another captured queen, Briseis. Contemned to be bed slave to Achilles, the man who butchered her family, she becomes a pawn in a menacing game between boredom and frustrated warriors. In the centuries after this most famous war, history will write her off a footnote in a bloody story scripted by vengeful men. But Briseis is a very different tale to tell, and she does. She really does flesh out the war. She explains everybody. We even get a better understanding of Agamemnon, of all people. Though, um, what is really interesting is the fact that it becomes rather funny. Her, her descriptions become really funny. Um, but if you didn't laugh, you'd cry. Um, here we are. It's when Agamemnon ch chooses Cassandra. Um, as his prize, God knows why. Perhaps he felt he hadn't offended Apollo enough. So yeah, it it, it is. She does have this sarky, sassy way about her, and you can see why Achilles actually, in the end, referred to her as his wife, and he liked her because she was sassy, even though she was silent for most of the time. She let um, the fact be known that she was not happy. She was here under sufferance, and there was a lot of sass. It's brilliant book it's split into three parts um you with all your privileges all your power how could you possibly know what it is like to be me it is brilliant um her work becomes really important to her because she ends up working in a medical hut at one point because there's a plague and apollo is a is the god of the is god of plagues as well as literature and the sun and everything else pretty much but it is a really really good gripping story you feel for everybody within this it brings it to life in such a new way um that you think that why on earth did we take over a thousand years to get it written from a female's perspective it's wonderful though at times it does um you do feel that you'd like it from Patroclus perspective I know that there's books out there like the song of Achilles but I'm not sure whether you actually hear Patroclus's voice. In this, you actually spend a lot of time in Briseis's mind um, and her thoughts about things. It is just brilliant. Really, really good. And Achilles is the only character that I've sort of done a mind map for because if you don't understand Achilles, you really don't understand this book. And I know a lot of people like start looking up to him now as a mighty warrior and everything and want to copy and emulate him. But really, you do not want to be distressed. You don't want the grief and you don't want the pain and you don't want the sorrow that he had, to be absolutely honest. And you don't want the whining and the sulking. I mean, he couldn't escape his fate. Did he try? No, he just whined and sulked. And drank a lot of wine. Um, so she doesn't back away. She doesn't shy away from anything. It's all covered here. It is really, really good. You could see that this is the way it was going to be and they're at war. You have to get into the mindset of what it was like to live in the 8th century BC. Or, because, yeah. But it, it, it it's stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, and it's so short as well. Her use of prose, her efficiency with her prose is just brilliant it's not over padded every word has meaning it's just brilliant um and she she really does an excellent comparison when um priam old king priam comes to see um Achilles to get the body of hector back he says no father has um done what i'm doing which is to kiss the person the kiss the hands of the person that killed them and then briseis um in her head fires back um, yes, so I'm going to do what loads of women have had to do in my position, open their legs for the person who killed their their family and um, everybody that they knew. So it really is a sassy novel. Um, it is um, somewhat shocking, but I mean, it's the Iliad people. It is going to be shocking. They murder babies in this book. Babies are murdered in this book. If you don't want to read a book about baby murder, about basically living in a rape camp, because that's what it was, you know. I mean, the only thing that you possibly might be confused about, like, why do they continue, like, 
weaving on their looms. But then again, if they didn't weave on their looms, there wouldn't be any blankets for anybody. So come on now. So things like that, it is a good story. But that doesn't mean the story is about good people. It just means it's a crackingly humane read. And it's all over. Somebody stole my wife. Which is basically what it is, because Helen got stolen by Paris. And then um, Agamemnon steals Briseis from Achilles, and then Achilles gets the hump and just sulks. And they nearly lose the war. So it is an incredibly good book. You get the voices of everybody. Everybody's in it. You really do get a balanced perspective. You find out what happens to the men. You find out what happens to the ladies. You find out what happens to everybody within this novel. It is absolutely stunning and it is well written and I recommend it to everybody. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And it really does bring the place of women to life because the main reason that he sulked when Briseis was taken from him wasn't because he loved her or he felt anything like that. Oh, no. It was the fact that the army had given him this girl as his prize for being Achilles. And Agamemnon had taken her away from him, which meant that Achilles as a warrior, as a leader of men, had lost face. That's why he sulked in a tent and cried. But then again, Alexander the Great sulked in a tent and cried because he modelled himself after Achilles and his fate. Um, yeah. And his face, his face, yeah. I can't even say it now. His Feistian um, modelled himself after Patroclus. So, I mean, whoop de doobly doodly do. Just so you know. So it is a hugely influential book. Without this book, there would be no Alexander the Great. There would be no Hephaestion. There would be no art, no culture, no Harry Potter. It is that important a book. Well, a poem. And the fact that it's still inspiring literature to this day just shows how important a story it is. It's not a happy story. It's about distress, grief, pain and sorrow because that's what Achilles' names mean, name means in Greek. And I mean, life is about distress, grief, pain and sorrow and how humans cope with it. It's such a human story told in the most brutal and vicious way ever. So, if, I mean, if you want to read a story about the Greek rape camp, this is the book to go to. Pat Barker, you've written a stunning masterpiece and it is a triumph. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, comment and subscribe if you want to um, leave comments about this book in the comments below if you want to read leave comments about the Iliad about Achilles leave comments below about what you think about it but it is absolutely stunning stunning it's much better than the Troy film with Brad Pitt even though I did like the Troy film with Brad Pitt I felt that they um, toned down certain elements because what you have to understand about the Greeks is to be a man in Greece is to be the complete master of your like world you were given slaves concubines um you had a wife you had fun with goats you had fun with guys you weren't restricted in any way people weren't policing your sexuality in fact the more partners you had showed how powerful you were whether these partners be your sheep your goats your slaves your concubines your wives your bathers your your boys or whoever it was really important and I think that that's something that's overlooked but also I think people make too much about like the relationship between Achilles and Patroclus was it platonic deep friendship because what people don't understand is from the age of about sort of eight or nine these boys were put together trained to fight and then sent all around the known world winning battles. So their best relationships would be with other men, not in a gay way that we would understand it as gay today. These were the only relationships that they could remember because they didn't want to look back because the, the memory of their mother was painful. So they built these new relationships with the men in their camp. So to have the camaraderie of men like that would lead to what you would call gay relationships, very much how in prisons you get same-sex relationships happening there because you have a common camaraderie. But in this society, it would be 10 times, it would be 100 times more important. 
your allegiance to your man would outweigh the allegiance to your wife. It doesn't matter. I can get a new wife. I can get a new slave. I can get a new goat. I can get a new concubine. I cannot get a new Billy who I've been with since the age of seven, since we wrestled together and learnt the ABCs. You know, he's always been at my side protecting me. So it goes beyond that. So if you want to leave comments about um, the Iliad or the science of the girls, please do so in the comments below. Let me know what you think. This book is brilliant. I was just blown away by it, to be absolutely honest. Patroclus comes out as the best character. He really is like the good side of Achilles. Whereas Achilles is such a whiny and sulky, impulsive brat, you just want to hit him. But you know you can't because he's doomed. This is what happens. So it's like comedy and tragedy go very much together, which is why towards the end some of this does become funny because you're either going to laugh at it or laugh with it or you're going to be in a, rocking in a corner crying because it's that tragic. Hope you've enjoyed this review. Please let me know your thoughts. Um, and please like, comment and subscribe. Bye, everyone.